Hi, everybody, and welcome to Men's Health Month programming that we're doing here with Health Promotion Services, as well as our wonderful campus partners. Um, today's info session is for college men with dependents and or student fathers. We're going to be talking about different types of services, different experiences, and really what students can expect if they are students with dependents, but also what they might not know to expect as a student with dependents coming to UCSD or a current student. Um, just to begin, my name is Christopher Sperling. I'm a health educator for Men's Health here at UCSD Health Promotion Services. Pronouns are he and him. Um, and we do all sorts of fun things here. Um, again, this is Men's Health Month. It's also Men's Health Week, and it's also Pride Month. So there's a lot going on this month, and we want to celebrate with lots of really great programming. So if you wouldn't mind introducing yourselves as well, um, whoever would like to go first is fine with me. Uh, sure, I don't mind uh, going first. Hi everyone, my name is Andrew Hua. I serve as a student affairs case manager and outreach specialist here at UC San Diego. My pronouns are he, him, his, and ta. Um, very excited to be speaking here with all of you um, and sharing some of the information services I hold within our office, but I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Eric. Hi, I'm Eric Snyder. Uh, pronouns are he, him, his. Uh, I am a PhD candidate in oceanography, kind of Scripps Institution of Oceanography, um, and I am a student parent. I've got a six-year-old son who just finished kindergarten. Awesome. Thank you both for sharing and introducing yourselves. Um, so sort of jump right into today's session. Um, I'd love to start with Eric. Um, I have a few, just a few questions about just your experience as a student and what that looks like as a student with dependents. Uh, first off, just sort of jumping right in, what has your experience been overall as a student with dependents here at UCSD? Yeah, I think that's a that's a, a really big question. And, and so I was thinking about how to kind of frame it. And, you know, there are lots of challenges with being a student um, with dependents, uh, like time management challenges and um, you know, figuring out how to take time for yourself is always a challenge. So there are lots of challenges, and I think um, overall my experience has been has been um, has been a mix of challenging and figuring out kind of how far I can push myself, but also um, realizing that there are resources out there to to help with that. Um, so yeah, I think. I don't have a, a great one sentence example. There's, I could talk for a long time about, about all the different aspects of it and everybody's experience with it is different. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely an experience that has, has kind of um, been eye-opening into, into what I'm capable of doing and, and, um, and what, uh, how to find community and things when, when they're so so much to, to juggle and balance, yeah. Gotcha, thank you for sharing that. And I like that you centered what you, how you're growing and what you have learned from that experience as well. I think that's very important. Um, sort of jumping off of that, speaking of what you've sort of learned, what is one thing that you wish other student parents knew about being a student parent at UCSD? Yeah, I, I think, one of the things that I've I've realized over the past year working with Andrew and, and the Parents and Caregivers Committee um, is that there are quite a few little resources here and there and um, figuring out how to access those and, and being aware of those is something that I would I would like other students with depends to know. Um, so I think Andrew is going to be talking more about specific services that are available so I won't go into it too much but but just yeah I think um, reaching out for help has been something that has been very helpful for me, obviously. Um, but, but yeah, there are, there are great services through CAPS. There are great services through basic needs that you can access to get assistance. Um, and so, yeah, just being aware of those and being aware of how to access those, I think it's the number one thing that's been useful to me. That's really, really good advice. Um, just sort of across the board, we see that men tend to reach out for services less than other gender identities. And so being able to take the courage and taking the time and effort to actually reach out can really be beneficial. I'm not saying that everyone needs to do that. Everyone's on their own path and journey. But if it's something that you feel like you might need some support with, 
actually taking those steps to find those services um, are can be challenging, but it's also a really good opportunity for growth. So thank you for sharing um, that part of that. Um, switching gears a little bit um, to Andrew. Um, I'd love to hear a little bit more about the services that are available through case management, stuff that's available for students with dependents, not just student fathers, um, and sort of what that is like here at UCSD. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I, I just want to shout out, Eric, some of the processes and some of the resources that have been developed was in partnership with Eric. Right, Eric and his colleagues and other members of this campus really made some great progress and headway into, um, you know, making the resources available. Um, you know, I, as Eric was sharing, I think, and as you were sharing, Christopher, you know, having to put a little bit of the burden on the students of having to reach out, find those resources can be difficult, right? So some of the aspects of my role, right, I forgot to mention earlier is, I do chair currently the initiatives and efforts regarding students with dependents overall. Um, and I think one of our biggest challenges that we've noticed through assessment, through connecting with students is how do we spread awareness? How do we get folks to know that it's available without having them dig through, um, you know, tons of people talking or whether it's um, going through website after website. So just to let you all know, um, I'm gonna put it in the chat, but I'm sure, uh, Christopher, if you would like to put in show notes or um, share on an uh, attachment to the presentation, uh, that's our link. Um, we have a link that kind of uh, puts all the resources in one place that we're aware of that supports student parents. Whether you're an undergrad student parent, whether you're a graduate student parent, we try to put it all in one place. And also we try to bring in uh, community partners. So not only do we have on-campus resources, but bring in the off-campus resources, just in case those students are like, this on-campus does not fit what I need, maybe an off-campus resource, resource does, right? Now, to step a little bit away from, uh, you know, students with dependents and initiatives and talking a little bit more about case management, um, our services also reach out to, you know, the larger population uh, besides just students with dependents. If a student needs, uh, support in any fashion of like finding off-campus providers, finding medical providers, mental health providers um, that are within the UCSD system or outside the UCSD system, case management oftentimes can assist that. Um, and there's various touch points, right? So uh, if you're an undergrad student, definitely connect you with your Dean of Student Affairs. And I know it sounds scary to reach out, but they're super friendly. Um, and they often are able to connect, um, you know, students, undergrad students to case management um, if we can assist them with, you know, basic needs or um, various points uh, of uh, support, right? Um, additionally, for grad students or students from the School of Medicine or SCAD School of Pharmacy and Pharmaceutical Sciences, um, they connect, can connect with their specific deans um, for the grad division. It's the uh, Assistant Dean of Student Affairs, April P. Jorgensen. Uh, for the pharmacy uh, school, it is uh, Desiree Shapiro, and in the School of Medicine, uh, Dr. Kama Baluma. Uh, all those folks definitely reconnect back with me as a case manager uh, when necessary to support students. Um, and then the, the other two points of support are uh, where you can get access the Basic Need Center. They have their own assistance form. Once you're connected there, um, sometimes case management comes in and supports if it's necessary, but they really do focus on the basic needs portion. And of course, the students with dependents um, assistance form, which is also located on the website. Uh, but to kind of give you all an uh, uh, overarching piece to all of this is that we're here to build a support system. And because it's Men's Health Month, regardless of gender, but specifically for men, we can get you connected to providers that you are interested in, right? Maybe you're looking for a mental health or a medical provider that, um, you know, shares the same gender, the same race, ethnicity, or background. Uh, we have um, resources to look into what can we best fit the student needs. So long-winded answer for so much that, um, for a very small question. <laughs> No, no, that's perfect. Thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, I think it's so important to know that there are, are a range of services available and ways of accessing those services as well. 
And sort of on that access piece, I know you did talk about this a little bit just before, um, but something I find very helpful when working with college men is demystifying the process itself. So um, looking at, we have phone numbers to call, deans that you can reach out to, all these different things. Um, would you maybe be able to describe what would happen after that contact, after maybe they reach out to that dean, what that conversation might look like, just sort of like demystifying some of the unknowns around this conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it comes down to uh, a, a conversation. The dean will most likely reach out to the student, try to set up a meeting, and just be there of support. Ask questions of, how are you doing? What kind of support do you need? What can we do to support you? Uh, whether it's sometimes it looks like contacting professors and asking for support or leniency during a crisis. Uh, sometimes it's also um, getting them connected with the academic, um, you know, side of the, you know, administrative sides, right? So academic advising for um, the undergraduate colleges. So uh, oftentimes the deans really bring in the deans at the academic advising. Um, see where we can do what we can do to support students when they're having academic struggles and what options do they have, right? And also the deans and assistant deans on this campus do a fabulous job in connecting students to various resources, uh, right? So if a student expresses they have some basic needs concerns, absolutely connecting them to basic needs, initiating certain protocols or processes to give them the resources and support that may be financial, that may be housing security or even food security. Right, so it's all about uh, you know trying to meet the students' needs as quickly as we can, but also how do we develop long-term stability? Right, I think that's important, and that's sometimes where case management comes in. Uh, deans sometimes, after consultation, after one-on-one meetings, may decide you know the student may need more long-term support, um, and then they refer to case management. And case management, we meet with students as frequently as we can. Right? If a student, uh, for instance, I, I meet with students sometimes every other week. Um, I either meet with them monthly or even quarterly, depending on what the student need is. Um, and there's sometimes in a high point, I meet with them weekly um, to make sure that they get the care that they deserve um, and the services that they need. Uh, so from there, it just continues support until they no longer need case management, until they no longer need uh, you know, immediate emergency resources, and they're more stable. Uh, so that kind of gives you a glimpse of what a student goes through after having, um, you know, been referred or having contact with the Dean of Student Affairs for the undergraduate college or the various uh, professional schools, medical school, uh, school of pharmacy or graduate division connects with student affairs in their um, units. Gotcha. Thank you so much. I think that was really helpful. And I think that that really laid out sort of a framework of what to expect. And that's really great. Thank you so much. Um, I'm going to open up the floor to anyone who has further things they'd like to share or to let students know that other people know as well. Um, and just to let you think about that for a minute. Um, if you're listening today, um, if you want to hear more of the three of us, we actually recently did a podcast episode together as well. Um, and you can find that on U, um, health promotion at ucsd.edu. It's called our Live Well, Be Well podcast. And we did a whole episode around Father's Day and around what it means to be a student parent. And um, some of these resources are also talked about there in a little bit more detail. So definitely feel free to check out that podcast as well. That being said, um, I'll open up the floor to my wonderful, amazing guests. Yeah, maybe I can just um, kind of add a little bit of my experience in um, to what Andrew was saying there. Um, my my first year here when I came four years ago, um, I was kind of unaware of, of any other student parents at in my department at least. Like I, I live on campus and there are plenty of families around campus, um, but I didn't really know any other students in my department that had dependents. And it wasn't until, um, you know, months into the program that I just coincidentally ran on this, ran into somebody on the bus and found out they had kids and then like slowly started building a network um, over, over like the first two years I was here. And it would have been great to know who had kids or who had dependents like from the get go. So I knew who to like reach out to for resources. And I think that's something that um, I would, I would really like to see departments implement. Um, just kind of connecting current students with dependents to incoming students with dependents. 
Um, I know one of the challenges that I, I experienced with that was I thought, I, I had kind of felt that this, the graduate student experience was designed for, um, you know, students without dependents that could focus, you know, give 80 hours a week to their <laughs> graduate programs. And, and, um, and so I, I was trying to kind of hide that part of myself, um, my, the first little bit I was here, because I felt that it, it somehow disqualified me from being a, a graduate student. Um, and as I went on, I realized that that's a that's completely erroneous thinking. And and well, the student the, the program is often designed for a specific type of student that students with dependents don't always fit. Um, the system, like, you know, academia as a whole is kind of designed for a, a very specific person. But um, I could I could kind of find my own way in that program by finding a community of other students with dependents, and and they're out there. You just they're not as visible as, as, as you would like them to be. But I think um, I would like to add that to what Andrew said, because because it, it, like hiding the fact that I had a dependent was was not helpful at all. And once I was open about that, I was able to get pointed towards resources and communities that really helped open up doors um, and helped me become a more successful graduate student. Um, and then to kind of tag on to that, another more personal thing, I think, um, advice that I would give to any anyone starting out, and every student with dependents will tell you this, but you can't compare your experience as a student with others. We don't have the same ability to commit, um, you know, weekends and evenings to, to our, our studies. Um, and, and the value you're adding is unique um, because you're a unique individual. So don't, don't compare the amount of, of what you're able to do to, to other people because your experience is different. Um, and I think any, any student with dependent are, has already learned that, <laughs> but maybe hearing it one more time doesn't hurt. <laughs> so I'll throw that out there. You know, Eric, thank you so much for sharing that. That's what you share is so powerful, right? And I think, you know, that's super important to recognize that, you know, students with dependents, they are here, they exist, they've been here. How do we make sure that we they're seen? And how do we make sure that they're getting the services that they deserve? Especially when it comes to, you know, as I think about expanding our knowledge and our services, what does it look like for single parents? Our single parents who are going through it, our single fathers that are going through it, our single mothers that are going through it, right? How do we make sure that they get the resources that is equitable across the board, right? And as you talk about community, as you talk about um, how can students continue to be involved or, you know, be seen on this campus, I just want to make a shout out to Eric um, and his colleagues. There have been major efforts on building that community. Uh, on our website, if you wanted to find out, but Eric could put a plug in as well. Um, we, you know, there's there's an organization on campus, Student Org. Um, it's the Parents and Caregiver Student Org. Um, you can easily sign up, get involved on, through our website, and even their blog is posted on our website, right? And their blog post, it comes from personal experience. These blog posts speak about what are the challenges, what are the experiences on this campus, and how to navigate that. Um, I've had the pleasure to read some of those blog posts, work with the actual blog writers. Um, so I would say find that community um, because, you know, you can't do it alone. I think it takes, a, we, we've all heard, it takes a village to raise, you know, a child. And I think it takes a university and a larger village to support that family. Um, so I think that's important to reiterate and also be mindful about as we continue to support students with dependents, our, our fathers on our campus as well. Um, but, you know, in addition, pl additional plug to that is that if you visit our website, um, you can find all kinds of things whether you're looking for community, whether you're looking for resources, whether you just want to be kept up to date uh, on some of the events that are occurring or some of the resources that become available. Um, you'll also see the podcast that Christopher was uh, mentioning earlier and uh, alongside some of our webinars that we've been holding. Um, so definitely encourage that, definitely encourage you to check out um, all the resources that are available and continu continuously being developed. Right. And uh, but I'll leave it there. Um, but yeah, just want to shout out Eric and the work that uh, the Students for Dependents Work Group has done um, and Eric's colleagues.
Yeah, that's we. Yeah, if you want to connect with us, we would love to hear from, um, especially incoming students with dependents that that might not be aware of um, the communities that are out there. But yeah, we've got a Facebook page, um, a Twitter page if you're on Twitter, um, and that blog, and then we have a Slack channel. We've got we we're trying to build as many avenues as we can to become a little more visible online and and create that community. So um, I I can link to all those. Um, and maybe send that to Christopher and we can put that up somewhere if that's if that's helpful. But yeah, we've, um, and they're also all on Andrew's website, I believe. So, um, but yeah, this, the student, the parents and caregivers um, student org that we started was, was, to de was designed to advocate for resources and create a community. And so um, there's been pretty good strides in creating that community. Um, the Facebook page is probably the, the biggest the uh, easiest way to connect with people, there's there's um, over 100 people on it already, uh, students with dependents. Um, and yeah, people go on there and ask questions occasionally, and and it's a great way to kind of find other students with dependents. Um, so yeah, I, I think, yeah, we can link to those, and I'll, Andrew's got links to all those on his website as well. So great way to connect with us. And with that, um, I've gotten personal emails from people who are asking about resources and, and we've got an email address. Um, let me actually, the email address is, oh, I lost it, sorry. <laughs> well, um, I think it's just caregivers at ucsd.edu. So feel free to email us, caregivers at ucsd.edu. Um, I've gotten emails from people that are asking Kind of more specific questions that they're not comfortable asking to larger groups um, and i i'm not like a professional on this so i don't always have the the best answers but i can at least point you towards things um, i think yeah just just being able to ask questions is really really huge and i think i think um it is interesting to see that um I think, I mean, stereotypically men ask for help less. And I think most of the questions we've gotten are from mothers or, or women who are um, caregivers in some way. So it is interesting to see that men are asking for help less there. Um, so for whatever reason, there could be a, a lot of reasons for that, but, but yeah, feel free to email me <laughs> or email our group and we're happy to chat with you some more. Wonderful. Well, thank you both for sharing that information. I think building a sense of community and a sense of belonging is so important to not just mental and emotional health and well-being and all of that, but also academic success is part of all of that too. And really, there's all these things here available, all these students, all these staff, all these different opportunities available to be involved and to be a support. So please reach out if you ever need anything. And we are more than happy to help um, provide support to students along the way of their college journey. That being said, that's all I've got for you today. Thank you so much for joining us and keep an eye out for other stuff that we do around campus and online. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Bye. Thank you all. Bye.